Now we all know that Super Mario is a platforming franchise. That's what it's mostly known for after all. However, a couple of years into the franchise, Nintendo decided that it should be more than just that. And so they started to introduce puzzle elements. And one item that played a huge role in all of this was the P-Switch, which are seen in a lot of games like Super Mario Bros 3, Super Mario World, New Super Mario Bros, and more. However, how did this item even help achieve their goal of more diverse gameplay? Well, let's find out. Now all of this started in Super Mario Bros 3. Here the first switch block appears in World 1-1. They are initiated by jumping on them and once activated, they turn all brick blocks from an area into coins and vice versa for approximately 10 seconds. However on some occasion they likewise cause groups of blue coins to appear on screen, that you can collect of course. Now as these effects are only temporary, Nintendo tried to make that clear by adding a characteristic jingle or clock ticking effect that gives the player an idea how long it's going to last. Now, as you can imagine, Nintendo can easily use this to create all kinds of clever puzzles that some players wouldn't be able to see at all, or find out about way too late. And that's mostly because of the fact that people can grab the coins, which could be useful as a platform once the P-Switch is found and activated. And so, it was something you had to look out for and think about before you just start running around grabbing all the coins, which made the platforming more complex because there was thought to it all. The terrain and things around you had more of an influence after all, and those blue coins were more of a mini-game to be honest. Which is fun and all, but didn't add too much in terms of puzzles. It did make for a fun platforming challenge at times though, because these blue coins had to be collected in a limited amount of time. However, this was only the very first step. As you can imagine, you can take this concept a whole lot further. In this first game, they were just thinking of platforms and simple stuff like that. However, in the next game, that changed. The title I'm talking about is Super Mario World, and this is actually the first game in which switch blocks can be carried by Mario and saved for later. As you can imagine, this this changed everything. But people also started to exploit it because there was a glitch which made Mario carry the Switch after it had been pressed for a short amount of time, if he was quick enough before it disappears. Now you might think, why is any of this special? Who cares that you can carry the thing and then use it somewhere else? Well, actually a lot of people cared, especially because in all other games until the Super Mario Maker series, you couldn't carry them and actually had to use them on the spot. So this new level of freedom was a really big thing as you could imagine. Players never had any of this before, and as you could have expected, Nintendo used this to make even more complex puzzles and hidden routes. You can even find them before you even encounter a location where you should use it. So exploiting those new routes became quite a task. Aside from that, they also introduced the grey P-switches, which makes most enemies turn into grey coins. Obviously, this wasn't very useful for puzzles. However, when it comes to combat, it was worth its weight in gold, and especially now that you could pick it up and use it as soon as you encounter a huge group of enemies. And the crazy thing is, when you collected 8 of these coins, you would get an extra life. But it doesn't even end there, because when you collect one more, it gives you two extra lives, and after nine coins, you will earn three extra lives for each additional coin. So in general, this one item was incredibly powerful and useful. Clearly Nintendo expanded the concept to more than just turning coins into new platforms while doing the opposite to break blocks. All of a sudden they played a role in combat as well. So with all of this going on, what would be next for Nintendo? Well for a while they were gone from the series. Nintendo started to focus more on 3D games. And here P-Switches weren't really seen. But, luckily enough, after a while they came back when Nintendo finally started making 2D games again under a completely new name. Well, it's not completely new. The series I'm talking about are the new Super Mario Bros titles, which were a modern take on the old 2D games from the 80s and 90s that people loved. In the first game of the series, which was made for the DS, the P-Switches have the same function as in previous games, for the most part. Now they either spawn in blue coins, or turn brick blocks into coins and vice versa. But that's not all. They also added some new things, such as more level specific functions like revealing staircases and certain doors in the ghost house of World 3. And unlike in previous games, certain P-switches can be reused multiple times. 
and so the puzzle aspects were expanded upon once again. In general, the ghost houses became quite big levels that were designed like a maze, and the peace witches helped achieve this. Thanks to the fact that they made staircases and even doors appear, Nintendo could make multiple different routes inside places like this, which made it more fun to explore these in general. However, aside from enhancing the puzzles in the game, it also did something else. It created tension. Those staircases and doors were only there temporarily, and so you had to be fast at times in order to make it to a certain door or up a set of stairs or something. This combined with enemies, traps and other stuff really made places where peace with which were seen special, especially the ghost houses. So with this grand return, what would Nintendo do with this next? Well, to be honest, not much really. Nintendo once again became distracted, which happens quite often actually. Just watch a couple of my other Evolution Up videos, which you can find in the upper right corner, and then you will see how short Nintendo's attention span can be. In the end, the new Super Mario Bros. series became a bit stale, and when it came to the P-Switch gimmick, nothing new was added. This goes for new Super Mario Bros. Wii, new Super Mario Bros. 2, and way more. None of them really did anything. And that was also because Nintendo Nintendo started to make new stuff that functioned in a similar way to the P-Switch. And things like this happen a lot, believe me. For example, in Super Mario Galaxy we saw the question mark coin, and collecting one of these could trigger a number of events. Either a power-up spawns, musical notes appear that you could follow for a reward, you get some star bits, and there were even more options than just that. In a way, it was similar to the P-Switch. And the funny thing is, later on they even added features like this to the P-Switch itself. So when would we see it return and do something new? Well, actually in the 3D game made for the Wii you, Super Mario 3D World. Here they could do all the stuff that we saw in other games, but they added a new version as well that was orange. This one required multiple characters or items in order to activate it. But that wasn't all we saw. There was also a golden and character specific button. Now, while their powers and functions didn't really change much, using them was different now because they couldn't be used by everyone. In a way, this does fit very well with this game because it had a very heavy focus on couch co-op fun. Nintendo probably did this because it was such a huge success back in the Wii days. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a great example of that. So I bet that they added stuff like these special P-Switches in order to make teamwork necessary to reach certain goals. Now whether this is a good thing is up for debate. Not everyone is a huge fan of multiplayer aspects, but in the end it did change the P-Switch and how it was used in the game. But as you can imagine, this wouldn't be permanent. In the next game, Super Mario Maker, things changed while they retained their functions of changing brick blocks to coins and vice versa. But now they also stop conveyor belts from moving, as they did in Super Mario Bros. 3. And once again, they can also be carried like in Super Mario World. So in this game, they regained all their old powers and options once again. But that wasn't all. There was more. In an update on December 21st, 2015, they introduced something called a P-Warp Door. And these act as a normal warp door, but are only usable when a P-Switch is activated. Again, this allows players to make more complex levels in the game. Because now you know there's a door, and finding the button for it is your problem. By creating something like this in a level, you could make all kinds of extra side paths that could lead to the P-Switch. Or you could just make a maze, for example, like we saw in New Super Mario Bros with the ghost houses. In general, the options are endless for builders in Super Mario Maker. They can use all the old mechanics associated with the P-Switch, as well as this new door mechanic. Heck, you could even use this stuff to make individual puzzle rooms, where you have to solve a certain riddle or puzzle, and then you get a P-Switch so you can progress. Clearly, you can have hours upon hours of fun with this one item. So, was this the end for it all then? Well, yes. However, it was still seen in a ton of games after this one. So, we will still see it in a bunch of other games. For example, titles like Super Mario Odyssey and Super Mario Maker 2. Here we saw them again, serving a similar role to older versions seen in previous games. Sure, there were some minor changes here and there when it comes to design and what they could do. For example, they light up in Super Mario Maker 2 in certain map types. But overall, this stuff wasn't anything major. And so, this is where our story ends now. But, don't worry. While Nintendo forgets about the P-Switch from time to time, it always comes back.
Well, so far it has at least, and I'm quite glad that it keeps on returning. Because to be honest, this one item is great for puzzles, and really made puzzles a cool thing in the Super Mario franchise. It really helped establish all of that, and who knows, maybe they will do something big and new in the next Mario game. All of us are still waiting for Super Mario Odyssey 2 after all, and maybe we will actually see that somewhere in 2021.